Adam, we got the final game week of the the 2022 season, and you know, I I would imagine that you know it's an emotional time for the players, but there's probably some of them that are ready to kind of get this season over with. I think uh, you and I, in a lot of ways, are ready to get this season over with. Uh, uh, it's been a long one, that's for yeah. sure, and um, you know, it, it's it's sort of a celebratory week because it's senior week. You know, it's Thanksgiving. There's a lot of fun things going on, but um, you know, it, it's kind of a weird time with this last game, isn't it? Yeah, it has been a long season. Uh, you know, 2012 was a rough season to, to cover this program. This one uh, is right up there with it. I, I will say that what's made it a little bit more palatable is just the way that, that Mike Sanford has operated since being named the interim head coach. You know, it's it's been great having him at those press conferences, and he's just been such a fantastic representative for this program through a really challenging time and at least had the cow week you know that that was a lot of fun for one day the the CU fans got to forget about where this program was and so and not just Mike Sanford these other assistant coaches I I know that quite a few of them are compensated pretty well but you know, it's still a tough spot to show up every day and, and to put in the hours that these guys do. And by all, by all accounts, you I mean, they, they still have been burning the midnight oil throughout this, this stretch. And so uh, that part of it's made it a little bit more palatable. And, you know, we've, we've talked about it. We've tried to make uh, fun out of these road trips right. and try to find the fun in it. But uh, not only kind of relieved that this is the end of the season, but that, you know, they're going to name a new head coach soon and we'll be able to kind of start that new era of CU football. Yeah, and I will add too that you know the players have really taken that uh, along with Stanford, and um, I've been amazed at how you know those guys have kind of kept their heads up and you know um, stayed engaged. And you know every guy that I talk to talks about how hey you know I still love this team and it's fun being around this team. And you know Brady Russell told me last week he said you know it seems odd to anybody from the outside. He goes, but it's been still a lot of fun to come to practice and and be around these guys. So. I credit them for that because they're making the best out of a situation that um, in a lot of ways is kind of crappy, you know, and, uh, you know, you feel bad for a guy like Brady Russell that, you know, he gets here right after a really good 2016 season. And, uh, you know, I know he, he was a walk on and not like a blue chip recruiter or anything like that, but he's thinking, you know, Hey, I'm coming to see you at a pretty good time and <laughs> ends up, uh, he never gets, well, I guess he went to the Alamo bowl, but he was injured that year. So um, he never got to play in a bowl game. Uh, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of these guys have been through a lot, right? Um, you know, we're talking about Utah this week, and Kyle Whittingham has been there for, you know, I think 4,000 years as the head coach there. But um, this will be the fourth head coach that Whittingham has faced at CU in the last five years. That's insane. Yeah, it really is. And you mentioned Brady Russell. And, and when Mike Sanford was listing the guys that are going to get honored at Senior Day on Saturday, one by one, there, there's so many great stories on this football team. Yeah. You look at a guy like Terrence Lang that came in and heard that he didn't have a, a great work ethic, had a lot of improving to do from a maturity standpoint. I run into his mother before a game this year, and she talks about how he's up at 6 in the morning cleaning the house in the morning, and she doesn't know what happened to her son while he was here. There's a lot of stories, and I get it. It is a bottom line deal. You know, yeah. when, when they're 1 in 10, that's what people are going to focus on, and that's what college football is. But, you know, we're around these guys a lot and you just see a lot of development out of so many different people in this program and and that's cool to see yeah well and there's been so much focus and i get it now in recent years especially about the money in this sport right in the bottom line and nil all that stuff but at the root of college sports and in college in general is the development of young people right and uh, you know you see that you know with terrence lang you know brady russell such a different guy than he was uh you know quinn perry uh has seems like he's been here forever now even though he's a junior college transfer yeah, yeah. uh he's a different guy you know and um alex fontenot is a different guy than he was when he first got here so you look at all these guys and you know they've developed and you know that you hope that they're that they've that they've set themselves up for for life as as men you know uh, as as they move forward because they sure have been through a lot i mean there's probably not i mean there's different adversity in life but there's probably not a whole lot of ups and downs that you're going to face in life more so than yeah. these guys face in four or five years here there's a lot of just scar damage around here right as yeah. a result of the last 20 ish years and yeah i know these guys haven't been here for all that time but you know they've heard about the struggles of cu and the fans that, that are still sticking with it have been through that and so uh, you know we've been through a lot of it uh, along yeah. for this ride as well so uh you know we're in this weird position of having to stay as biased as we can but man you just like you said you root for people and and 
even like beyond the coaching staff, guys like Curtis Snyder and, you know, uh, Dave Platty and all the people that, you know, they work just as hard when this team is losing. Yeah. And it, it's just been a, a tough environment to be around for so many years. And uh, hopefully Rick George finds the right guy to, to lead this program going forward because, uh, you know, the, the people that have endured what they've endured uh, deserve better. Yeah, and you know, including Rick George, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's as I know as down as fans are on you know Rick George right now. You know that guy's put in a ton of work over the years as well, and you know I guarantee you that guy's competitive and wants to win. So uh, uh, I think everybody involved with this program, you and I don't work here, but you know, covering it, everybody involved with this program wants it to be better going forward. But it is a celebratory week for those seniors, and uh, that's really what it's all about this week. There's all those young guys that they need to keep, um, that they need need to hang on to going into next year. But this week is all about those seniors, and so um, you know we'll see what happens. You know, senior day uh, you know can sometimes lead to some emotions on game day, and you know, maybe produces you know one of the best results of the season. So, you know, uh, you know we'll see. But you know, senior day is always kind of a, that celebratory day, no matter how the game turns out. And as bad as Colorado has been, they aside from a couple instances, they've competed at Folsom Field. And so, yeah. uh, Utah's such a good team. Obviously, I'm not going to pick them to beat the Utes, but uh, I'd be surprised if they go out and, and just lay over and get blown out the way we saw frankly, last Saturday at Seattle. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, I was out there in Seattle, and um, it just, I, you know, I know after the game, Sanford said guys didn't check out. It really did look like they had checked out. And uh, you had mentioned on TV it looked like, 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 looked like that. So um, I don't blame these guys. I'm not. That's not a criticism, yeah. honestly. It's just – because I, I think it's. How it's, could you not, right? It, I mean, right. Yeah, it's Give amazing me. they didn't check out weeks before, right? Um, and frankly, I thought the checkout was not even the entire game. I thought it was that brief period during that second quarter. And Stanford even said we played a better second half. I agreed with that. Um, I thought they came back uh, better in the second half. So I don't blame these guys for that. But um, I imagine that these guys want to come out and play just one last football game together and play the best they can. And I agree. I don't think they can beat Utah. I think Utah is too good. But I think we see a different effort. Yeah, I look to where is the experience on this team and guys that know this is my last college football game. And it's on that front seven defensively, which, frankly, everybody would have to agree has been a disappointment with their play this season. We saw them play really inspired football mm -hmm. against Cal. And now it's a different animal they're going up against this week. But that's kind of where I look in terms of my optimism and, and thinking that I'm going to see a lot of fight out of this team on Saturday. Yeah, and you know it has been a disappointment, not all their fault. You know, I think that that's been they've they've been through a lot <laughs> up front as well. But um, so I guess let's get into prediction time. You know, what do you think on this game? Yeah, you know, Utah's maybe not that top echelon, but they're hanging right in there. I mean, they went out to on the road, a packed Autzen Stadium, and almost pulled off that, that win there and lost by a field goal. So this is a really tough football team. The, the best defense in, total, in terms of total defense, they're, they're only giving up 20 points a game this year as well. So it's going to be tough. You, you look at you know, one of the top, if not the top defense in the conference going against the worst offense in the conference, and I don't think that's even debatable. Uh, so... I can't see any way in which Colorado pulls off this upset because I just they're not going to score enough points in this game. But I do think the defense is going to play inspired enough to keep Utah from scoring, you know, the points that maybe the odds makers think they will. So I'm actually going to go pretty optimistic in this one. I'm going to say that front seven plays really inspired football for CU and holds Utah to 28 points. But I'm only going to give Colorado seven points, so 28 to seven. Okay. You know, last last year uh, it was Utah's senior day when they went out in Salt Lake. We saw sort of an uninspired Utah team that wasn't playing for a whole lot uh, last year, and um, they kind of sleptwalked through a 28-13 win over the Buffs. Um, there could be something on the line, but, you know, Utah's kind of a – um, they're kind of a long shot to make that Pac-12 title game. So I'm not sure there's a ton on the line for them this week. I agree with you. I think CU plays inspired. I'm going to give them a little more credit. Uh, we keep talking about that 20 mark, right? <laughs> you know, they, they've surpassed it one time this year. I don't think it's number two, but I think they hit it. I'm going to give CU 20 points in this one, but I'm going to give Utah 37. And I think third straight week the opponent gets a safety. What do you think? The way this season's trending, <laughs> I'm not going to discount any, anything as a possibility. And it could be a totally different way. We've seen uh, you know, the uh, potential grounding in the end zone. We've seen a snap over the, the punter's head. I'm going to go with a different type of safety, but a safety nonetheless for Utah, 37-20. Uh, one last thing, it is Thanksgiving week, so um, just got to ask, what's your favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal? Well, uh, 
I make pretty darn good mashed potatoes. Uh, throw some sour cream and, and cream cheese in there with some garlic salt, some a little paprika and butter on top. It's definitely not something that I make on a regular basis because it, it's not good for the heart or your health, but uh, everybody really enjoys that. That's my one contribution that everybody always wants from me this year, but my wife makes a wonderful turkey. Uh, turkey can be pretty mediocre but hers is really good and I, I really don't eat turkey outside of Thanksgiving so uh, th those are the two things and I got to throw in uh, the mother-in-law's uh, green bean casserole I can't leave her out of it what there about you, you? yeah I, I mean I, I'm traditional I, you know, I, I like the turkey stuffing mashed potatoes and your, your mashed potatoes sound pretty good so I might have to come over there but um, I like those those things I mean those are traditional and then you know my mother's uh, green bean casserole is pretty good as well so um, that's an underrated dish on Thanksgiving I, I think so but We'll be stuffed by the time we get to this game. Let's hope the Buffs are uh, you're ready to play an inspired football game, and uh, we'll be back afterwards to talk about it.